G. Coville here. This is the first video of my Kim One restoration project. I purchased this Kim One on eBay about three or four months ago and I got a pretty good price on it and that's because it is broken. It's um, in pretty rough shape actually. As you can see there's some distress to the seven segment LED displays here three are actually missing. Um, this one's got some uh, dents or something, things like that. Someone tried to, very hard to remove them. The uh, transistors that are driving them, they were bent over. I've since straightened those out. Um, the Kim One has two custom programmed uh, ICs. These are RAM, ROM, IO timer chips and the ROM and some of the address decoding inside these chips is custom masked and that means that they are impossible to find. If you, um, I'm actually missing this one. This one I've just removed from the board. It's, it's actually up here. But this one is um, U3 and you know you just can't go out and get these things anymore. If there are any of them out there that are operating they're already in working Kim1 single board computers. So one of my projects is to uh, replace that with um, a similar part that has no ROM and add an, an EEPROM as well and make a, a daughter board that will go on top of here. But this first test that I'm about to show you is just a CPU test. What I've got here is the uh, expansion connector and the application connector coming over to a nice Heathkit breadboard and power supply over here. I've got a circuit over here uh, with an EEPROM and just a simple uh, 3 to 8 decoder. And in the EEPROM I have a very small program which uh, does not use any RAM, uh, does not use any I.O. All it does is reset the CPU and it counts down um, some loops and then accesses some addresses which I will be able to detect on the decoder using a logic probe. I'll start by applying power to the system and over here on the Kim 1 uh, you can't see anything but it does have power and the CPU will be operating uh, properly once I hit the reset button. Okay, and then over here I'm going to look at some of the chip selects using a logic probe on the decoder chip. So this is the chip select for the EEPROM. Since you know every cycle accesses the EEPROM, you would expect a lot of activity on this one. That's fine. So the program I've got in the EEPROM counts down from 256 in an index register, and every time it hits zero, it accesses this chip select. And that has got constant activity. And then it uses the other index register and counts down from 256 every one of those and activates this chip select. And you, now we're seeing that the pulsing is a little bit slower. And every 20 of those, I'm using the accumulator to count down from 20, it'll work this chip select. There was one. There was another one. Okay, so that indicates to me that the CPU is operating and my circuit and EEPROM and reset capability is all working. 